All right. So tonight we have our survivor story with Dorian. So Dorian has two degrees and one diploma. His first degree is from Brock University with a Bachelor of Arts and a double major in classical studies and history. It was in his fifth year that Dorian was involved in a motor vehicle crash resulting in a catastrophic brain injury and halting his education. He was determined to finish his Bachelor of Arts and was able to complete the remaining credits over two years of part-time studies. In the winter of 2015, he applied for the fall 2016 Niagara College's Social Services Worker Program because he wanted to give back. After the completion of this program, he decided to further his education and obtain a Bachelor of Social Work from the University of Waterloo. He completed this feat in 2020, June 2020. Dorian has, um, a, has a resolute resilience, a deep empathy, and developed an unconditional positive regard for being able to work in social services fields. He, uh, he wants to work with individuals and families who have a loved one with an acquired brain injury as he wants to instill hope and foster the importance of community. You will notice he has many tattoos on his body with different languages, and those phrases are from a few mantras in his life. Please welcome Dorian. Hello, thank you for having me. It's always a big thing doing my survivor story. Like I was telling a few of the members that came out here, my last time I spoke of this story was actually at you know, by a conference that they held at uh, Brock University. And so since then, I had to update my story over six years since, it, since I lasted the story back in 2015. But I'll jump in now. So my accident happened in 2013. And before it, I was a regular guy. I was 23 years old and living away from school. I was living away at school. I was a son, a brother, an uncle, a friend, and a student. I was living away from the hometown of Clinton, which is north of London. I was living with five friends in St. Catharines and going to school at Brock University. I was in my fifth year of a double combined major of classical studies and history. I had one semester to go before graduation. I had a typical life of partying, socializing, 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 and of course studying. My last family function was Christmas with my three siblings and my parents. It was uh, traditional for us to get together and have Christmas. My, my family really just, just got together at Christmas and birthdays. We weren't really close back then. After my family Christmas, I returned to St. Catharines and back to my friends. This is where my memory of things begins to get fragmented as it's from people telling me what happened to that form, my, that form these memories. So I'm told that on January 18th, 2013, I was heading to downtown to Fotobo with my roommate and our friend for an early supper around four. I was driving my car down Burley Hill when a drunk driver crossed lanes and caused a head-on car crash. A front passenger received a broken collarbone and a, a frame pierced his leg, and the back passenger was uninjured. I am told that my seat was pushed to the back and I was unconscious. I was breathing, I was breathing unconscious, unconscious during extraction. Uh, paramedics knew that I had uh, deprecated posturing while still in the car, which signaled to them I had injuries to my brain. I was taken to St. Catherine's General Hospital for stabilization and told that I, that I had a Glasgow chromosome rating that fluctuated between three and five, which is determined extremely severe. I was immediately transferred to Hamilton General Hospital by helicopter during a, during a winter storm, which I was, where I was sedated and intubated into a coma. And my rating was now determined at three. Uh, the doctor said I had obvious injuries to my brain with scattered sub subarachnoid injuries. My other injuries included a C2 fracture, which meant I had to wear a C collar, I had a laceration on my left leg, that was in the middle of my shin with four exposed and required they stapled my wound shut. I had a torn PCL in my right leg and a broken left thumb. I was fed through G tube and was at this time de declared having suffered catastrophic injuries. I was substantially unable to perform the essential tasks of employment, 
suffered a complete inability to carry on normal life, suffered a substantial inability to engage in caregiving and housekeeping slash home maintenance activities. I stayed at Health and Gender until February 1st when they stra uh, transferred me to Stratford Hospital because Stratford was the closest hospital to my parents' home and could meet my needs. They wanted me close to my parents while I waited for a space to open in the regional rehab, rehab center at Hamilton General, and that's where I would receive intensive rehabilitation. Um, on, journey, on February 21st, a bed finally became available, and I was transferred back uh, to, the, to the hospital where I stayed until April 15th. Um, so I don't really, really remember much of February. What I think of now is like a dream state stage. It seemed like every time I woke up, something new would be happening. Uh, when I try to think back to this time, I have flashes of memory, like a photo album. I still can't separate between whether I really remember events that I see in photos or I just remember the photo. That's why it's like a dream. Eventually, the sequence of memories is disrupted. I don't know which memory came first or what the order is for that matter. As a result of my brain injury, I know I, it has affected my memory the most of my executive functions. Uh, because of these memory issues, I have to rely on my friends and families, family to tell me, uh, tell me I'm recovering from January 18th to March 1st. Doreen, can I just interrupt a little bit? Can yeah. you move a little closer to your microphone? It's uh, a, that would be better, yeah, if that's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a little yeah. hard to hear you sometimes, so we want yeah. to hear every word. Oh, sorry. Thank you. That. No, thank you. Uh, so here are some of the stories that I was told that I have that I was uh, having between uh, uh, January 18th and March 1st. So uh, three of my uh, four of my roommates came to visit me, and I each gave them a high five. And when all the member, all the all the one roommate that was involved in the car accident with me, I didn't want to give him a hand, uh, a high five. Instead, I hid my hand on the blanket. And when he was at the door, I pulled my hand out and gave him a finger. And another time when three friends came to visit me, I told them there are enemies in my room. One of my friends asked me, where are they? I told her, under the bed. Uh, she looked around the bed to humor me and told me I was right. There are enemies and asked me what to do with them. I told her to maim them, which I don't know where that came from. I, I uh, was told I threw a nurse's phone in the toilet because I was annoyed with her sharing my face. Um, when I had even kept up, I would or tell people, tell a person to push me around my, in my wheelchair and follow the nurses I found attractive. When my nephew's first birthday was coming up, my mom and sister asked me uh, what I wanted to get him. I told, I told them I slap in the face. Um, a nurse had asked me what my name was. I told her my name was Dorothy Rivers. I once got mad at my dad and threw blueberries at him. So I, I think all during that time, my anger and emotion was really at the at the peak of everything, but I did remember things like signing my my uh, birthday card for my nephew, uh, doing word searches, uh, remembering to walk to the bathroom at falling. As I recovered through March, my friends and family still came to visit. Um, they were astonished by my remarkable improvements I made since February. The biggest accomplishment I achieved was the ability to walk by myself again. With no support, and I got rid of my C crawler. After completing my neuropsych test, I had a team, insurance, and a family meeting to discuss my next steps of my from my rehabilitation. I was discharged from health in general and said goodbye to my rehab therapist, my rehab therapist Mariella, on April 15, 2013, uh, to go to a step down rehab house in the Niagara region. Uh, to the therapist, I was considered to be high functioning but I was unaware of my impairments and the difficulties I had. However, being at ResCare Premier, the staff and my new therapist helped me see that I did have problems. 
which included uh, word finding, problem solving, time management, stress management, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, activities daily life, planning, organization, reasoning, decision making, and judgment. Uh, there are probably more skills that I didn't mention, but those are the biggest ones that I uh, that I really that are always pointed out to me. But even when I was in uh, the Niagara region, I still felt like my, the same old Doreen. I said that I had a light brace and I, I now wore glasses. Uh, with the support of the staff at ResCare, I was able to reestablish the skills that were impaired. But more importantly, I was able to reestablish myself as a son, a brother, an uncle, a student, and a friend. Uh, they, were able to, they were able to be like a compass that pointed me in the right direction without telling me what to do. Um, even when I was at ResCare, my family and friends still came to see me. One of the greatest feelings I had came in May when my parents surprised me with a celebration dinner with my friends and family for finally being out of the hospital. The accomplishments I made since day one was a testament on how I wouldn't let my injuries beat me. Uh, not only did my friends come to see me, but I also wanted to see them and my family. In May, I had the great opportunity to hold my newly born niece, Avery, for the first time. Uh, plus in June, I had the chance to walk across the stage for convocation to, to receive a three-year pass degree in classical studies and history. Uh, but I didn't stop there. I returned to Brock to complete the five, uh, last five courses for my honors degree in the fall of 2013. And But because of my uh, term PCL, I couldn't do the same activities I was accustomed to, such as going on hikes. But I always gave it my best effort. Um, so I, I had the pleasure to work with a number of therapists, including Dr. Good. Dr. Good and another therapist didn't see me as brain injured, as they saw great possibilities in me and wanted me to unlock my full, uh, full potential. They achieved this by focusing on my strengths found, and found ways to compensate my weaknesses. Uh, between the two of them, they knew that my strengths could dominate my impairments. So I left the residential house of ResCare and moved into my own apartment uh, downtown St. Catharines on September 1st, 2013. I still had lots of rehab staff supporting me, but had support from therapists too. And this allowed me to begin going back to living on my own and going back to school. And then prior to school beginning, I met with uh, one of my professors that I was going to be auditing. She told me that I inspired her because I was choosing not to sit in a chair for the rest of my life and do nothing, but instead return to school with injuries I have. And this confirmed to me that this injury wasn't going to stop me. Fast forward two years, so 2013 to 2015, I successfully completed the audit course back in the fall of 2013, then completed two half credits in the, winter, in the winter term. I no longer had to wear a knee brace for my torn PCL. I started volunteering at the St. Catherine Museum in the spring of 2014 because it was a career related position. Um, my eldest sister gave birth to another uh, baby named Sawyer. Then I returned to, fall, to, returned to school in the fall of 2014 to attain the half credit in the course I'd audited, I had audited the previous year, then completed two more courses to receive my honors degree. Then in December of 2014, I finally was able to drive again because I was, I was cleared by doctors to drive. I only had five uh, training sessions before I could attain my G license again. I joined Toastmasters and became their. Um, uh, president of, uh, Vice President of Public Relations. And then at the, my last year, Brock, uh, Dr. Gunn and two other professors and uh, museum staff have recommended, rec recommended, have recommended me for the Brock Circuitate Award for my dedication, determination, and forge ahead attitude. And then fast forward again, so this would have been Near the end of, um, no, this is in mid mid 2015. Um, 
an on, a reporter from the St. Catherine Standard had called me asking me if I wanted to do a follow-up story on my first my first story the Standard did of my accident in January 2013. I agreed to the reporter's request and with the interview. If you want to find the story, it can be read on the uh, Standards web, the St. Catherine Standards website. I can provide. I'll, I'll find a link for that and, and uh, shoot it and put it in the, in the, in the comments below. Uh, during the interview, it was hard talking about my accident. In terms, of, I have a shit ton of information going through my head, through my mind, about what to say. Also, not knowing the full story, plus not all information I wanted, not plus not all information was to come in in time. Then, so I graduated from uh, Brock in, in June. So I got my license back in July. And then what I what I go from there? I took a year off from school and leaving for work, but couldn't get a job. So I continued to volunteer at the St. Catherine Museum. Then after a conversation with two different friends about giving back, I decided to apply to the Mary College uh, Social Service Worker Program for the fall of 2016. Uh, the, uh, the program was an eye-opener for me as I learned more about myself, like my strengths and weaknesses. So I did my first, um, I did my first practicum at a men's recovery home for alcoholics, which showed in people that had that unconditional positive regard. The next term, I had a, a practicum at Kenya Living, which again showed my unconditional positive regard that I was able to, and I was able to work again. I worked there for eight months, and then I left to continue my spilling of water living because I wanted to become a social worker, as uh, Claire mentioned. Um, I applied, and I was accepted in the BSW program for the fall 2019 program. In the meantime, I was actually working at Traverse Independent, which was a challenge, for, challenge because I went through the exact same thing that the people I worked with were going through. My boundaries were put to the test. I had to make sure I had a strong boundary so not let transferring of, of my emotions happen. I left Traverse and started my BSW program. Um, my practicum was at House of Friendship Women for Residential, and I was a pioneer for the agency as a as I was the first male counselor to be at Women's Residential. It was challenging going to the BSW, BSW practicum because I had previous knowledge of the social service field through schooling and placements, as well as my own lived, lived experience. It was challenging because my self-reflecting, what I did in St. Catherine, what had, has happened to me today, and I'll let me see that. I did overcome my challenges by self-reflecting on what I done in what I did in St. Catharines, and then what has happened to me today, and not to try and hide the fact that I have a brain injury. I always have limit, I know I know I always have limitations, but I'll always overcome them. Um, sadly, COVID hit and transferred all my practicum to being done online, which worked quite well for me because being a researcher. I was able to like, do, my ta do my last task um, by writing papers. So I was able to finish my ruined courses and, and my practicum and eventually collect the colors to, to register as a social, social worker. And as of right now, I'm unemployed, looking for work. And that's why I uh, joined the, the BIAWW to gain a volunteer experience and give back in a different manner. Thank you. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so thank you, Dorian. Um, uh, I, there's a question here that about um, when you went through all of your rehab, um, everyone has different types of treatments that, that work for them. So could you talk a little bit about which ones you felt were the most effective? because there's lots to try, right? So which ones did you find helpful for you? Like, did you do vision therapy? Did you do um, 
physical exercises? Like what helped you kind of move the needle on your recovery? I guess my biggest treatment was actually, uh, um, I was having my physical therapist because like with having a torn PCL, I was basically that, basically, immobilized me, that's not going anywhere. So I wanted to get that better. And then from having a constant schedule of working out each, uh, each week, so I was able to transfer that to my other day life. So I always had a schedule. So I think, yeah, I think my, uh, the physical treatments was, was the ones I got the most, but like, I never got any like vision therapy or any, any, actually any type of therapy that I can think of. Okay. Um, in terms of the memory recall for your accident, um, who helped you with that memory recall? And, and did you feel it was important to try and recall and work through the accident details or is it, do you think that's important? Um, so when I watched my story, like, my memory kind of come from the two passengers in the vehicle. They, they told me sort of what happened that day. But then also uh, my sister who actually lived in uh, St. Catharines as well. Like she was the first, she was the first one there. And so they, so they just told me sort of what they've, so we have, we have eyewitness accounts from the two, 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 two friends with me in the vehicle. And then my sister was able to sort of piece the uh, pieces, piece memories together. But when I try to like think about my logic, for going uh, downtown, my brain starts gets all scrambled because. So where we where we lived, we were right close to the highway exit. So I don't understand why I'd go down this go down a hill to go to then go back onto the highway. Yeah. So I don't I don't try to. You guys, I don't try to think about like that part because. I was told um, that part of my memory will be erased forever, so I won't be able to relive okay. the accident happening at all. Right. Uh, what about the process for getting your driver's license back? Can you just walk through us, walk through what you had to do in order to, to make that happen? And how did you know you were ready? So, remember when I went, when I first got to like Resker, so June, I think. Each time I had a meeting with Dr. Good, I'd say, oh, when can I get my license back? When can I get my license back? And she'd always say, put it on the back burner, put it on the back burner. That's the least of your worries right now. Focus on school, because that's your main, your main thing that you want to finish is schooling. And so um, in 2014, my insurance company, they wanted to get rid of me. So they, they had me do a neuropsych test, another neuropsych test, along with other other tests like an occupational therapy test, a psychologist test, and I think the other one. But after doing the second neuropsych test, that's when I asked them, "Am I clear to get my license back?" And they said, "Yes, you are. You don't have any like um, emotional outbursts." When when I was doing the test, I was quite calm so they showed them that I was able to like keep my emotions together mm -hmm. and so they send their stuff to uh, Raspberry but then I, I had to see a doctor to sort of clear like to clear me for my vision on that so did that and then I had to do find a occupational therapy agency that does um, um, rehab driving. Right. And so there was one in St. Catharines. And then at first I had to grow up with a driver instructor and then a occupational therapist, which is quite intimidating. We have two people in the vehicle. Right. Watching everything you do. I remember 
I, I actually, uh, and so when I first did it, I was just going easy on myself. And I remember I asked, do you want to know the highway? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to, I'm, I'm good right now. Right. They, they took it as I was too scared to go on the highway, but I just went with it. So after I did five training sessions with the instructor, I had to do a retest with the occupation therapist and training and the instructor in the vehicle, which is more intimidating than getting your key license. Mm -hmm. And that's why I had said to them when I when I did do the test, because they said that they almost failed me because there's a few um, instances that I sort of my mind sort of slipped on things because they that's when they know it that. I shouldn't multitask when I'm driving. Right. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, hopefully that answered that that question. Um, what about your friends? A lot of times we hear from people that um, their their previous friends have all moved away, and it's really difficult um, to make new ones. Um, what's your experience in that? Um, yeah, when I went back to when I was looking. The, so when I left the hospital and went back to Brock, it was sort of, it was that confusing time for me because a lot of my friends were actually graduating. And so then when I returned to school, I made some new friend, but all the friends, all the, um, the, two, the two guys that I was in the vehicles with me, I'm not really a friend with them anymore. Then, then the uh, other roommates that I live with, we don't even talk anymore. So I would say we're not friends anymore. Um, but I do have, so from my Brock years, I do have three friends I still keep in contact with. And then making more things more confusing. I moved to Waterloo. So right now I don't have many friends. That's why I got two dogs for myself because they're they're my best friends. Yeah. Okay, so it's difficult, right? So oh yeah, it's it's really tough. Okay. I remember I remember um, one of the, one of the first times I got on Facebook, a, um, someone I knew from Brock who who developed cancer. She had said to me, "You only know who your true friends are because they're the ones that stick around." Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and what about your family? How has that changed? Um, as I said in my story, we weren't really close then. We're actually closer than ever. I think having the nieces and nephews helped bring us uh, closer. So now, like, my dad, my, my dad, my, my dad's unemployed, like, retired, so... He basically like living up in St. Catharines with me. <laughs> right. Which was nice, but also a headache sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Type them into the uh, chat, please. Um, and so right now, what, what you're work, looking for work, um, what, what is the type of work that you're trying to do? And why do you think that your brain injury is um, going to help with with making that transition to to the uh, to the working world. So, I first thought like, so most most of my like practicums in my in my social service career were done at like places with addiction. So I thought I'd go that direction, and and it would always shock people saying like, how can how can I, how can I work with um, that population that which caused my injury. Right. And I always said that I didn't care. I'm here to help. So that's where that unconditional positive regard comes from. But then in terms of my brain injury helping the field, it just shows that like never judge a book by its cover. And that people felt like people I told I told this to a, uh, a group of interviewers that only people who have lived experience can develop that empathy. Yeah. I don't that sat well with them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
All right, so uh, I think that's it for the questions on the chat. Let me just check again. All right, well, thank you very much for your discussion. I think, um, I think hearing about uh, the way that you got hurt and what you've done to overcome that is, is tremendous. I do want to ask you about your tattoos. Can you tell us one or two stories about the tattoos? Yeah, so this one, excuse me. So the feather and the birds and this phrase, it was actually my first tattoo. It's, um, it's Greek for know thyself. Okay. And then a lot of, a lot of, my, all of my tattoos are actually of Greek imagery because of my love for hostile studies and history. Okay. And I guess they're a conversation piece as well, right? When you, yeah. uh, no, and you interact with people, it, it, it's a way to help with uh, have opening discussions, right? So, yeah. My fair question to ask is, did they hurt? Oh, okay. <laughs> I always say, of course they do. Yeah. Think of a knife going on and scratching your, right. scratch your body. Okay, great. I'm going to take everybody off of the um, recording and uh, just hang on here for a minute. Thank you very much. I appreciate the, uh, the discussion. Well, thank you.